Criminals who are members of a gang are often deemed more dangerous and fearsome than the ones who operate individually. That's because they're part of organized crime, and like anywhere, there is strength in numbers, even when it comes to breaking the law. Gangs tend to provide a level of organization and resources that support much larger and complex criminal transactions than any solo criminal would achieve. Once a gang overpowers an area, it becomes quite difficult for law enforcement to get rid of their influence. There are several violent and dangerous gangs operating around the globe, and some of their members are wanted for all the heinous crimes they've committed. While a few of them have been caught, many have managed to evade justice. After years of investigations and chasing, some of the most fearsome gang members were finally captured by police, and the justice system made sure they were given the maximum punishment. Here are 10 most hunted gang members reacting to life sentences. Number 1. Abel Gallegos, Alonzo Quintana, Rene Rosales Abel Gallegos was one of the three gang members involved in taking the life of an innocent woman in Adams County. The gang members, Alonso Quintana and Rene Rosales, along with Abel, were arrested in connection to a woman who was discovered back in 2018. According to the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, the three men abducted 28-year-old Simone Duran, who identified Quintana in a lineup following an incident in Adams County. The three men considered her a snitch, according to the DA's office. Gallegos approached Duran on social media, and she agreed to meet with him and the other two in the beginning of November of 2018. She left her house with Rosales and Gallegos. Rosales went home while Gallegos took Simone to a parking lot at West Colfax Avenue and Kipling Street, where he arranged to meet Quintana. The two men then assaulted the unsuspecting woman and forced her into the backseat of a car. They drove her to a dark area at West 7th Avenue and Nile Street in Golden. She begged for her life, but they showed no mercy. After setting fire to the evidence, they left the area. The DA's office said three men were tried together in a trial that lasted three weeks. The jury heard from 50 witnesses and saw over 400 pieces of evidence. They deliberated for just four hours before returning their guilty verdicts. All three were found guilty on several counts, including conspiracy, kidnapping, crime of violence, retaliation against a witness or victim, and violation of bail bond conditions. The defendants were finally sentenced in February of 2020 according to the news release from the 1st Judicial District Attorney's Office. Alonzo Quintana, who was 28 at the time, was sentenced to life in prison plus 160 years, as this was his third felony conviction. Rene Rosales, who was 36 years old, was sentenced to 150 years in prison, and it was his seventh felony conviction. And Abel Gallegos was sentenced earlier in January to life in prison plus 163 years, because he was on federal probation at the time of his offense and this was his sixth felony conviction. The judge called it a horrific crime and expressed his shock over a casual manner in which it was committed. Camera crews were able to film the moments when Abel was being sentenced. He stood silent with no sign of remorse on his face. His face held high while his family members and those of the victim were seen crying. Number 2. Carpio Brothers Anthony Carpio of Panorama City and Stephen Carpio were two brothers and gang members. They were arrested for taking the life of an 18-year-old man back in 2013. Anthony, who was just 16 years old back then, cornered Kevin Orellana with the help of his brother Michael while he was playing handball at Reseda's Cleveland High School. They assaulted Orellana together, but Anthony was the one who was armed. A third co-defendant, Michelle Pineda, who was 21 years old, was also involved. The incident occurred after the Carpio brothers approached Orellana while he was playing on campus after school and changed him as a possible gang rival. There were witnesses who stated that it was Anthony Carpio who took Orlana's life. The brothers then ran to a getaway vehicle that was being driven by Pineda, according to the prosecutors. The Carpios were members of a street gang, while Kevin Orlana was not associated with any gang. A jury found them guilty for the crime in October of 2015. Both were found guilty of one count of second degree. Anthony Carpio was sentenced to 16 years to life, while Michael was given 15 years to life, according to the Los Angeles Deputy District Attorney Scott Marcus. Michelle Pineda was sentenced to two years in county jail after pleading no contest to one felony count of accessory after the fact with knowledge of crime in November of 2015. Randy Page from CBS2 stated that both the brothers sat expressionless in the Van Nuys courtroom while Judge Martin Herskovitz announced the sentence. They showed no signs of remorse or emotion regarding their sentence. Marcus read a victim impact statement by Orlana's family before the sentencing. It said, As a parent, we need to dance at their wedding. 
celebrate a promotion, look forward to possible grandchildren. The last thought we would ever have is we would have to plan their funeral. Back in 2020, Judge Martin granted Anthony Carpio a transfer hearing in juvenile court to determine whether he should have been treated as a juvenile or an adult. But in 2021, Judge Morton Rock refused to hold any such hearing and outright ruled that the case would be handled in juvenile court and scheduled a disposition hearing. Number 3. Montana Baronet Montana Baronet is the 23-year-old man who was once dubbed as the number one trigger puller of the city by Baltimore police. During his trial, the prosecutors called him a criminal without a conscience. Montana is responsible for taking the lives of six innocent people. He is also called the public enemy number one of Baltimore. Baronet was the leader of the gang called Trained to Go. It was a gang that sold illegal substances and operated from Baltimore's Sandtown Winchester neighborhood. Montana received two life sentences for racketeering and narcotics distribution back in 2019. The U.S. attorney Robert Hur said Mr. Baronet's crimes speak for themselves. On the other hand, presiding judge Catherine Blake said that she considered the senseless violence Baronet was involved in, the six people who lost their lives at his hand and the many more lives lost or ruined because of the narcotics Baronet and others from his gang sold. The mother of one of his victims said in her victim impact statement that Baronet is the devil's child and that nobody could be that evil. He was convicted by a federal jury along with seven other co-defendants in October 2018. Robert Herr also said that it was difficult for him and for anyone to really get inside the head of someone else and understand what their life is like and what they are thinking. But he would turn back to the evidence and what the jury found Montana Baronet liable for. He was glad that justice had been served and Montana had been removed from the community. The acting police commissioner of Baltimore, Michael Harrison, was also at the sentencing in order to learn more about the cooperation between federal, state, and local law enforcement to end the violence in the community. At the sentence hearing, Baronet apologized to the family of his victims, saying that he was a good friend and relative. He apologized for the heartache and pain they believed he had caused. In a brief statement, Baronet also said, He was a good friend. I gave him advice for staying off the streets. Prosecutor said Baronet was part of a masked group of men who fired rounds near the University of Maryland Baltimore camps in July 2015. The incident caused three people to lose their lives. Number 4. Four Gang Members Xavier Gibson and his 30-year-old brother Orlando Gibson were members of a criminal street gang. The two men, along with three other gang members, were responsible for the brutal death of the 33-year-old Christopher Dean. The Fulton County DA revealed that five men together devised a plan to lure Christopher Dean to one of the men's apartments where they took his life in an effort to show the other gang members what could happen to them if they ever went against the gang. Christopher had been a California police witness. In 2016, Christopher Lockett invited Dean to the Atlanta home of Xavier and Orlando Gibson. Dean was misled to believe that this visit was going to be completely transactional, like the many that he had taken place at the same residency previously. Before this meeting, Lockett had found out that Christopher had been a police witness, and he, along with the Gibson brothers, wanted all other gang members to note that any cooperation with the police would not be tolerated. When Dean arrived at the Gibson home in Sandy Creek Drive, he was met with Orlando, Xavier, Quatez Clark, and Joshua Rooks, too. All five gang members assaulted Dean for over an hour and ultimately took his life. Rooks then drove to the scene to Marcone Street to pick up Jasper Green and Lamar Oman. All three then returned to the crime scene where Lockett paid Allman and Green to clean it up and get rid of the body and car. But instead of burning the evidence, the two men left Lockett's car with the body inside the trunk in a parking lot which was later discovered by police. After a two-year-long trial, a jury finally convicted Lockett, the Gibson brothers, Quatez, Rooks, and Green on several charges. Lockett was sentenced to life without parole, while Clark received two consecutive life terms, plus five years. Green received, like, plus three years. Rooks and Gibson also received a life sentence. The Fulton County Superior Court Judge Gail S. Tucson called the incident horrific, particularly because Dean was trying to get his life back on track and was the father of two young children. Dean's father, Larry, spoke at the sentencing. Amid tears, he said that Christopher's two sons were everything to him and it was incredibly difficult for him to tell a five-year-old that his daddy was never coming home. He also said, We all have empty spaces in our hearts for Chris. My heart will always miss Chris. Number 5. Lil Tony and Smack 
Lil Tony, whose real name is Antonio Nathaniel Davenport, and Smack, whose real name is Derek Lamont Dixon, were the members of a gang called Eight Trey Gangster Crips. The two were arrested for a horrendous crime committed in North Carolina. Lil Tony and Smack were responsible for the death of a nine-year-old boy who was on his way to get ice cream. Back in August of 2019, Davenport and Dixon of the Criminal Street Gang were at the South Point Mall in Durham for a reprisal attack of a rival gang. The move occurred because someone from the rival gang had assaulted Davenport four days earlier and uploaded the video of the assault on social media in order to embarrass him and the eight Trey Gangster Crips. After this, a series of threats were exchanged between Davenport and a rival gang member on Instagram. Dixon and another gang member, Deval Nigi Magwood, waited at the mall armed. Meanwhile, the unsuspecting nine-year-old Pearson with four other children was in a car with his aunt driving. They were headed to the mall to buy some ice cream. The trio mistakenly identified the Ford Escape Pearson's aunt was driving as the rival gang's vehicle. They pulled alongside the SUV near the North Duke and Leon Street intersection and opened fire in which Pearson lost his life. Later, investigators were able to identify Davenport as one who was responsible, as he was wearing an ankle monitor due to prior domestic violence charges. They were able to trace his location to the scene of the crime and later to Dixon and Magwood's homes, too. The gang has been involved in several criminal activities, including witness intimidation and bank fraud. Recently, a U.S. District Court Judge William Osteen sentenced Antonio and Dixon to life in federal prison with the death of Zion Pearson. Davenport had been found guilty by a jury while Dixon had pleaded guilty himself. Later on, Osteen also sentenced Magwood to concurrent 23-year sentences in exchange for being a cooperating state witness. Davenport remained expressionless during his court appearances and displayed no signs of remorse for the crimes he had committed. Number 6. Darian Gardner Darian Daquan Gardner is a 27-year-old man from Davenport who was a member of the Savage Life Boys, a Davenport-based street gang between 2016 and 2017. Gardner was involved in multiple shootings, including one at a dice game in December 2016 and at Hotel Davenport in February 2017. Gardner, along with his other SLB fellow members, robbed and physically assaulted a man. They also opened fire at his vehicle and fled the area. According to a release, in February 2017, Gardner and several other SLB members initiated a physical altercation with a man they believed had disrespected their gang at Hotel Davenport. During this incident, one man lost his life while another was injured. Gardner had committed these acts with the intent to maintain and increase his position in the gang, according to law enforcement. Back in July 2022, Darian had pleaded guilty on various charges, including assault with a dangerous weapon in the aid of racketeering, causing death and attempting to take a life in aid of racketeering. He was sentenced to 37 years and six months in prison. This sentence was imposed consecutively to two precious federal charges against Gardner that he is currently serving. After his sentence is served, Darian will have to serve five years of supervised release. The U.S. Attorney Richard D. Westfall said, This dedicated and long-term investigation highlights our commitment with law enforcement to combat violent crime. The families and friends of the victims in this investigation continue to feel the pain that acts of violence can inflict. We will continue to pursue every available law enforcement tool in partnership toward the common goal of community safety. The Davenport Police Chief Jeff Bladel also expressed his relief over the sentence and said that he was proud that the collaborative efforts and dedication and persistence to bring closure for the victims and justice for those responsible in the 2017 incident and several other similar incidents. Investigators from the Davenport Police Department worked diligently on Darren's case for several years with the U.S. Attorney's Office of the Southern District of Iowa and other collaborative partners. Number 7. Three Reckless Tigers Members Reckless Tigers is a gang that operated in Northern Virginia. This gang built one of the largest narcotics ring in the region. Three members of this gang belonging to the Fairfax County were convicted on a slew of charges back in 2022. These charges were related to 2019 revenge spree in which several lives were lost. According to reports, the U.S. authorities charged at least 20 associates of the Reckless Tigers with trafficking, kidnapping, money laundering, and other offenses. Many pleaded guilty while others have ongoing cases. Federal prosecutors also stated that in Virginia, the Tigers were behind two deaths, an unsolved death at one of the gang's house parties and the 2019 death of Brandon White. The three members of the gang, Joseph Lamborn of California, Peter Ledun of Loring, and Young Yu of Centerville, faced mandatory sentences of life in prison after being convicted by a jury in May for White's death and other charges.
Brandon, who was just 21, owed around $10,000 to Yu when he encountered another gang member, David Nguyen, in August 2018. David tried collecting the debt from Brandon, took $83, and assaulted him, leading to several injuries. Afterwards, Nguyen and another gang member offered White money in exchange for not testifying against him, but Brandon refused as his hospital bill from the assault was $74,000. He ultimately testified under subpoena and identified Nguyen. As revenge, Lambor, Lee, and Yu took his life in the woods near Richmond in February of 2019. White's mother, Karina, said at the sentencing that her son was just 21 years old, but he did the right thing when it was difficult. She described him as a happy-go-lucky man who loved motorcycles, wanted to be an aviation mechanic, and left behind a young daughter. Attorneys for Lee and Yu argued that a life sentence would constitute cruel and unusual punishment barred by the Eighth Amendment, but Judge O'Grady rejected their arguments and sentenced all three to life in prison. Number 8. Cordarius Dorsey and Quintavius Jackson Cordarius Dorsey, who is 33 years old, is associated with Slaughter Gang and Young Slime Life, while Quintavious Jackson is a member of the Slaughter Gang. According to authorities, both men were accused of robbing and taking the life of Solano Mianjalo at the Marathon gas station on Gresham Road in October 2019. Their surveillance footage of the incident showed Jackson waiting at the gas station. When Jallo arrived, Dorsey approached his vehicle swiftly. Jallo tried to shut the car door, but it was forced open by Dorsey. The two men struggled for a while, and eventually Dorsey overpowered the victim and ended his life. Jackson then approached Jallo and grabbed a bag from him, after which both suspects fled the scene and Jallo succumbed to his injury. Several eyewitness accounts and anonymous tips matched Dorsey to the description of one of the suspects. Detectives explained that social media evidence played a key role in bringing them to justice. Upon arrest, their phones were confiscated, and in one of them, investigators found photos connecting the two men to one another. Dorsey had recorded a social media video of himself the day before the robbery and was wearing the same sneakers as suspects in the footage of the incident. Dorsey had also sent incriminating messages. Authorities believe that the suspects already knew Jallo, who often carried large amounts of cash with him, so this was a premeditated confrontation. During the trial, Dorsey was convicted on several criminal charges. He was also indicted in Fulton County separately on RICO charges for believed offenses connected with the affiliation of YSL. Jackson and Dorsey were each sentenced to life without possibility of parole plus five years by the DeKalb County court system to take the life of Jallo, who was a husband and a father of six. Number 9. William Glenn Chun and Mitchell Farkas William Glenn Chun is a top leader and a member of the white supremacy prison gang called Aryan Circle. He's also popularly known as Big Head. Chun, who is 40 years old, belongs to Conroe. He was convicted back in 2021 of November by a jury of the Eastern District of Texas. The white supremacist was charged with racketeering conspiracy for an attempted death he had been ordered related to a violent incident, according to officials. In October 2022, jury in the Southern District of Mississippi convicted Chun on charges of violent crime and aid of racketeering. The court documents and evidence that was presented at the trial revealed that Aryan Circle is a race-based and violent prison gang with hundreds of members. It operates throughout the United States, both inside and outside of prisons. William was sentenced to life in prison in December of 2022 for using his leadership role as the highest-ranking Aryan Circle leaders to order assaults against the rival gang members and other victims as per the Justice Department reports. He also used his leadership role to retaliate against the people he believed were cooperating with law enforcement. Another Aryan Circle member known as Mitchell Farkas, who's nicknamed Lifter, was also sentenced to 30 years in prison for assaulting an inmate at the United States Penitentiary Big Sandy in Martin County, Kentucky. The gang believed that the victim had violated gang rules and he had permanently lost vision in one eye because of his injuries. Farkas, who belongs to Louisiana, was convicted by a jury in the Eastern District of Kentucky. Number 10. The Reaper Miguel Angel Correa Diaz from Laurel, Maryland, is considered the highest-ranking member and kingpin of the violent gang MS-13. According to an indictment, he was responsible for carrying out acts of violence, including taking the lives of innocent people. Correa Diaz also used to help broker illegal substances deals with the Mexican Mafia. He was responsible for trafficking these substances to customers in order to profit MS-13. He was the regional director of MS-13, Sailor's Click, for the East Coast according to the Nassau County District's Attorney's Office. 
Diaz is also known as The Reaper, and back in 2018, he was arraigned on three counts of operating as a major trafficker and five counts of conspiracy in second degree before the acting Supreme Court Justice Patricia Harrington in Mineola, New York. He was held without bail and James Hunt, a special agent in charge of the new division of the DEA, told the reporters, By arresting the head of the Northeast faction of MS-13, we have crippled MS-13's operations in both New York and El Salvador. The gang is also called La Mara Salvec Truca and is one of the largest criminal organizations in the United States. Diaz reported to the gang leaders in El Salvador, who also received the gang's profits and directed the cliques in both countries. Correa Diaz and other gang members also controlled the West Side clique of the MS-13 that ran a protection scheme around its base in Langley Park and extorted local businesses for operating in MS-13 territory. In April 2022, Correa Diaz, whose brutality was described by a federal prosecutor as almost unfathomable, was finally sentenced to life in prison for conspiracy in the aid of racketeering and other charges. The sentence was imposed after he was convicted by a federal jury. In his sentencing memorandum, Diaz's attorney Steve Mercer requested for a sentence that provides for a realistic opportunity for release. He asked the judge for a sentence no more than 21 years and two months, but this request was denied. Over the years, members of MS-13 have been convicted of a number of crimes around the country. It was started in Los Angeles by Salvadorian immigrants fleeing the country's civil war. According to an FBI threat assessment, the gang membership included immigrants from Honduras, Guatemala, Mexico, and other Central and South American countries.